Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be comparing indigos. And there are, or indigo-like, or dark blue, sometimes a good indigo in your palette is just nice to have. So you can mix indigo or a dark blue with some French ultramarine and black, and we'll do that. But I always like to have a good dark just pre-mixed, so I'm going to compare all the indigos or dark blues that I have, either by tube paint, pan paint, or a dot card. So I tried to round up everything I had, and so let's get started. So the first indigo I'm going to get started with is Daniel Smith's indigo. It is PB60 and PBK6. I've got it written out here. I'll zoom in on these as we go along so you can get a sense of the color up close. So I'm going to move in just a little bit now. I've got a ceramic palette here with, and I just squirted this out. So I'm going to put it on half mass tone. And then I'm going to kind of wash it out a little bit. I like Daniel Smith's Indigo. It's very beautiful. And I just thought I would take my time and make some really pretty swatches. That's nice, nice dark. I am using a Da Vinci Mastro here. I might switch out brushes for more control. That is a beautiful, beautiful indigo. So that's Daniel Smith. So that's one that everything else has to live up to. I'm gonna, I am going to switch my brush out to something that has a little bit more spring to it. I'm gonna try maybe this Princeton Heritage or Princeton Velvet Touch, number eight round. And the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to set that up here. I've got my swatch book here, the um, Painter's Color Diary. And I might do a swatch each in that as well. Just to, whoops, sorry about the shaky camera there just to keep a good record. There's mass tone. I just wanted to do circles. On cotton paper though, We're, we are going to see a difference. It's just going to be better. I can already tell it's going to be better. That's gorgeous. I can I can feel like on cotton paper, it's not going to be quite as dull as it is over here. It's going to be brighter and more luminous. But we'll, we'll do both. So that's Daniel Smith. I might do the these on cotton paper. Outside. Okay, the next 
The next um, indigo I have is from Winsor & Newton. Come on, focus. And it is PBK6, PV19, and PB15. So that's got a little bit of violet in it. And phthalo blue. I'm just going to squeeze it out here and take it right off the top. almost thick like butter. I can see the inner color coming through. And you can definitely tell it's a phthalo. And, you know, I, I think that everybody's, everybody's preference for an indigo is going to be different. That is quite beautiful. That is quite beautiful. You can definitely tell that there's a phthalo in there. But it is quite a beautiful color. I'm going to put that up here. I don't know if I like this brush to do swatching with. It's not holding enough water. And you got to get it quite thick to get a really, really good dark with this. I don't like this brush. Doing swatches. Let's go back to this Da Vinci. Okay, so I'm going to make a couple quick notes. I'm just going to put Daniel Smith, Windsor Newton. Okay. And the next indigo we have is American Journey. And it is PB27 and PB19. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. So instead of having a bunch of paint on a palette, I'm just going to squeeze it out a little bit at the top and just get it. Get a little bit of water to make it move. And this is very similar to Windsor Newton, the color. It's got that phthalo undertone to it. I guess it's just what you think you might want if you like that. That is at PB twenty seven. Hmm. I don't know if that's a Prussian blue or not. 
Let's see. Let's get it here. American Journey Indigo. You can definitely tell it's trying to be an indigo with the dark. It's very blue. This is getting, that's really pretty. The Windsor and Newton. Oh, I'll hold my final thoughts till the end. I have an issue with trying to think things through too quickly. American Journey. Okay. Now the next dark we have is Rosa Gallery. And I only have that in a pan. So, and it is, let me pull this up a little bit. It is PB 15.1 or colon one, PB19 and PBK7. So we're liable to see that Thalo. Thalo is just really, really strong. Rosa Gallery is one of my new, new paint to my collection. And I have just fallen in love with it. I really like this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty. That is a gorgeous dark. Gorgeous. Yeah. That is a really pretty indigo. I think it's helpful to see all these colors that call themselves by the same name. Now some of these darker blues are called different names, but could be put in your palette and work as an indigo. That Rosa is nice. Very nice. Oh, really like that. Okay. Let's put Rosa. Okay, and the next color I have to compare is Daniel Smith's Lunar Blue. This is really popular and on a lot of people's palettes. You know, I'll watch artists or watch YouTubes and watch, you know, different artists that use Daniel Smith and like Jean Haynes, she used, she's got a kit and it has lunar blue in it. And it's a really pretty dark blue. It's pretty. That could act as an indigo on your palette. Let's go up here and put some up here. Lunar blue. Isn't that pretty? It's different and it does have granulation to it and it's a little bit green leaning. Let me see what the pigments are. PBK 11 and PB 15. So it's got that Mars black in it that's going to separate and give you some really cool effects. 
I got outside my lines there. So that is quite beautiful. That is quite beautiful. And you can even see the granulation happening already. That PBK11 just really comes apart from the other colors. Okay, the next one is Blue Appetite Genuine. This is a Primatech color, which makes it a little bit more expensive. So if you was gonna use it for a lot, I don't know, you know, you could use it, get it and use it sparingly. I don't know how you use indigo. This seems a little bit green leaning as well. I'm gonna put this up here. We'll see because I think it granulates as well. Blue Appetite Genuine. It's really kind of leaning more towards a kind of a denim color. It's pretty. It's really pretty. I don't know. I'll have to see how it dries down. It doesn't have any pigment information on the tube. It just says Blue Appetite Genuine, and it is a Primatech color. Okay, the next one I have is Mayan Dark Blue, and it is a combination or it is PB82, so I'm not real familiar with this color. I have done some tests recently, and I do like it. I always try to put my lids back on my tubes right away because I don't want my paints drying out. This is really, really pretty. This is more towards an indigo up, like up there. Really, really pretty. A nice, nice dark. It's just what you're going for. This seems really, really nice and nice and deep sea blue. Kind of color. I was trying to see if it was a little bit staining and it looked like it could have been. Gorgeous, gorgeous, dark. Make a beautiful sky. It's really pretty. Now let me make a couple notes here so I don't get mess messed up. This is Daniel, Daniel Smith Lunar and Daniel Smith Blue. Blue Appetite, and this is Daniel Smith May and Dark. I 
that is a really pretty blue. I really like that one. I think I like that better than the indigo up here. We'll see how it dries. That one's our Newton. Oh, that one's our Newton's turn out pretty. We'll look at them. Okay, so the next one I have is Rosa Gallery, and this says neutral black, but, and the reason I pulled it out is because it's got PB 15.1, PBK 7, and PR 177. So it's a little along the lines of Rosa Gallery's Indigo. but using a different red pigment. So I just kind of wanted to try it. I noticed that it did have a blue under, undertone. I'm gonna put it on this cotton first. And I thought it was really pretty and could be used as a indigo color. I think that's beautiful. Let's put some on the pa other paper here. Okay, just making sure that it is in the picture. my heater. It's really pretty. It's really pretty. I think that could be deemed an indigo as well. It's different from that, so It has virtually the same pigment in it except for PV19. It's got PR177, so a little bit different. Okay, so that is what I have at the ready. So let me switch things up here. And I've got some other paints and some dot cards, and we'll get back to it. Okay, another one of Daniel Smith's I wanted to include in this and I just have it in a dot card here but is Sodalite Genuine and it comes off as being a nice I don't know if I'm going to have enough to to cover the whole swatch because I've used it a couple times. It comes off as being a nice dark blue as well. It's really, really pretty. It is a Prima Tech. I'll give that another layer when it dries so you can see I need more water. I'm trying to be stingy with the water. So I don't wash it out like I'm doing right there. Let's see if I can get a little bit more pigment up. There we go. That's really pretty too. That's really, really pretty. I'll 
I'll let that dry a minute and try to get a little bit more. But that, I think, is classified. I'm going to leave the pigment that's on my brush on there. That's I would classify that as in the indigo um, family. So this is Daniel Smith Soda Light. Genuine. It's a Primatech color, just as Blue Appetite is a Primatech color. So I'm going to circle that and indicate that. That is really pretty, though. I tell you, it's just so hard to choose. The more I look at it, well, we'll go on. I'll hold my comments till the end. I might go back and give that another layer once it's dried, but it's not dry yet. I'm just doing some tests here and <laughs> kind of want to hide it from you. So, until the end. So, all right. So, the next test I have is a gallo. A Gallo is on their website, they have indigo as NB1. And they say that that's the natural indigo. So I don't know if that's a dye or a pigment. I have not researched that enough, but I'll link a gallows website in the description below and we'll just see how that looks down oh that's really pretty let me put a little water on there to activate it more that's really pretty that's a really dark beautiful blue beautiful indigo color I love indigo I do love indigo here is that over here I gotta fix this mistake gotta get my circle a little bit better Get a little bit more pigment in there. That's really pretty. Let's put it on cotton paper and see where that gets us. Really pretty. Now I don't I am not sure how light fast this is. But, you know, you can go on A Gallo's website and order each color individually. And you can put your own palette together. It doesn't all have to be all Daniel Smith or all Windsor & Newton or all Rosa Gallery. You can mix and match your colors. That's quite a beautiful indigo color. I'm not sure how light fast it is. But that is gorgeous. That is absolutely beautiful. A Gallo is like a bougie, bougie paint. So that's what everyone calls luxurious. There's the, I keep my, all my packaging together. Keep it in the box. So, I'll let that pigment dry out before I, before I go any further. Okay, so the next one I have is Schmincke. I have a 48 set, but I took the indigo out. And it is PB15 colon 1 and PB66. I have a 
in the other order. I wrote them backwards. But Schmincke is definitely a high-quality paint. This is Schmincke Hortum. That A Gallo indigo is really pretty. So this is one that's going to have the phthalo, phthalo blue in it too, but boy, it's really quite beautiful. Really beautiful. Goodness. It does have that phthalo color in it when you pull it out. Really pretty. Really pretty. I don't know, that phthalo kind of gives the indigos a brightness to it. So, and not quite as dull. You know, I am not a snob when it comes to paint. So, if one color is better than the other, and I might put a palette together with my favorite indigos, my favorite French ultramarine. You know, why not? You know, you could put your favorite colors together and have the perfect palette. Get you a palette off a of, off of, um, Amazon. Okay, this is a PWC dot chart. And they have an indigo on here. And it is PB66. So it's a single pigment color. So I am interested. I have a very, very little bit amount. They are not generous with their... with their pigment, or with their dot cards. It's pretty. PB66 on its own. I wonder if that's light fast. It says it has a light fastness of two. So that would be not very much. What, I think that's less than 50 years, 25 or 15 to 50 or something like that. But you could increase that life fastness by putting it behind a UV phys fixative or UV glass. I keep knocking that. Oh. Okay, so let's put it down here and see what we get on cotton paper. Okay. Indigo, PB66, PWC. I need to make my... Oh, on cotton paper. <gasps> it's really pretty. When you first put it down. PB66. I'll have to remember that. Single pigment. Okay, let's make some notes. 
This is a gallo. MB1. This one is Schmincke. And that was PB15 colon 1 and PB66. So the same pigments are used here, but maybe they added thalo to increase the light fastness. And they look pretty close. This is PWC. PB66. Okay. Alright, so I'll put this up here and let it dry down so I maybe can get a little bit more out of that. That was pretty nice. So I have one more left, and that's Sennelier. I have this 48 set of Sennelier, and I do have the color indigo in here. And it's just not telling me the pigments. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's got a little brush in here, too. I just got these not too long ago. It does have numbers. It does have its name, Sennelier, E.D., Number 308 is the only cross-referencing number that I can match to, to the plastic, which I think is very helpful. Um, I don't know how bad that this is going to bother me. I'll do a full swatch of this set and review after I work with it for a while. Um... I've only had it, you know, I've just had the little Aqua Mini set, and I really, really liked them, so I had some gift cards left, gift money left, so I decided to treat myself to that, so I'm just going to get this Indigo. Get it wet. It 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 awakens quite nicely. Oh, that's very thalo. Very thalo. This is PB60. I think that's endanthrome blue. PB15 and PBK7. That is very thalo. I'd say that is. Out of my running for an indigo. Let's just make sure I've got the right one. Um, that says 308 on the and that says that's a dioxazine purple and it is. So, all right. So, I consider that Sennelier Indigo not an indigo. I think it's just too blue, as you can see over here. We'll let these dry down, and we'll come back and we'll discuss. Okay, so I thought I would... A lot of these are very, very pretty. But I thought I would do a mix of each one with Hansa Yellow Medium to see which makes the prettiest green. And that Daniel Smith Indigo with Hansa Yellow Medium makes a beautiful green. 
and you can, you know, put a little bit more yellow in it and make it lighter, or put a little bit more blue in it and make it darker. Okay, and the next one we got is Windsor and Newton. So let's see how that makes a green. I think that that's this one. But just to be sure, I'm going to just squeeze a little bit out here. Put it down. And then get a little bit of Hansa. I just don't want to mess up and get the wrong color. And take it off the tube. This may not be the most economical way, but that makes a nice dark green. Get a little bit more hot. Oh, shoot. Let's get a little bit more Hansa and see if we can lighten that up a little bit. That makes a nice green as well. And I'm just going by my list here. Let me kind of pull that off so we can kind of see what it's like. This indigo is going to be a little bit more staining. So that's that's pretty. I messed up. I messed up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's see if I can't get that off. That bothers me. I probably won't because Thalo Blue is staining. Shoot! Okay. Indigo. That was Daniel Smith, Windsor and Newton. Daniel Smith, Windsor and Newton. And the next one was American Journey. Let's see how that mixes. And I'm just looking at my, my paper over here, American Journey, because a lot of them are coming, turning out to be, you know, quite samey. If I had to choose one indigo just to use as an indigo, oh, I tell you, I'd either choose Daniel Smith or Daniel Smith Man Dark. That's really pretty. Or Rosa Gallery Neutral Black. I don't know. I'm just not sure I like the phthalo in it. So I'm kind of staying away from those. This American Journey has a phthalo color in it. So let me get a little bit of yellow first. Let me just do this. I'll just put a little bit of color in there. And we can have it for when we're ready. Because we're not really looking at the paper here. We're looking on how it mixes. Okay, so here's American Journey. And of course it mixes a beautiful green. So I don't think that's going to be the problem. Okay, 
Um, all right, there's that for reference. They're, they're, you know, that phthalo makes them very bright. Okay, what do we got next? We have Rosa Indigo. This is American Journey. Okay, Rosa. Rosa Indigo. I don't know if you can see that. But it is. Let's look at this and how it mixes with Hansa. And I'm using the same yellow so we can get sort of a comparison on how it's going to act. That's pretty. That's really pretty. It's more natural. That's really, really pretty. We'll see how it dries down. Let me lift a little bit just to see. It's pretty. All right, let's go to Daniel Smith's Lunar Blue. Now, I like Daniel Smith's Lunar Blue. Um, I couldn't, I didn't get it as dark as I wanted to, and I can probably get it a little bit darker. I am smearing that. Let's put that there. Okay, that's a little bit... Daniel Smith's Lunar Blue, I think, is a little bit, you know, I can get it darker. So it will definitely work. There's a lot of artists that use that. It's really, really pretty. And it granulates. And it makes a beautiful mix. And it will probably granulate. Yeah, I'm seeing the granulation already. I'll just lift it up and put some water in. And let that do its thing. It's really pretty. It's got that PBK, PBK 11 in it. really pretty. Okay, so the next one, let me make some notes. Okay, this one was Rosa. 
This one was Lunar Blue. And this one is Blue Appetite. That's really pretty. <laughs> that is really, really pretty for a green. And I got this really dark over here for the lunar. So, well, let's just keep on keeping on. Okay, Blue Appetite Genuine. I took a lot of that lunar that pigment off so you could get that more thick but boy that just shines okay here's blue appetite genuine okay let me get a little bit more That's pretty. All right, let's lift this up. Let's see if we can put some dragon water all over the place. Okay, so that's pretty too. I think that the Daniel Smith Indigo is kind of dull. So, as I'm doing my mixes, I'm going to see if I can't lift this Rosa. It's not as bright. It's not as bright as the Lunar. And the Lunar Blue has, you know what? It's got PB15, it's got Thalo Blue in it too, and PBK11. So, go figure. So here we got Man Dark Blue to go on to for the mix with Hansa Yellow Medium. I got a little bit more yellow on there than maybe I need to, so I'm gonna push some over here and get some of this man dark and mix it on the paper. That's a really dark green. Let's see if I can thin it out and get back to that. I really like that. Man Dark is Maybe put a little bit too much on there. It's got a foresty. Foresty look on look to it. It's not it doesn't have that brightness that comes through with lunar blue or blue appetite. And this is PB82. It's pretty as an indigo. But, you know, that lunar blue so far in mixes, 
and with mix them with Hansa Yellow Medium is my favorite so far. Okay, so the next one is Rosa Gallery Neutral Black. Here that is. So we're going to get some of this. And see what happens. I might need a little bit more yellow. I think I do. Let's see here. In all mediums, black and yellow in general make a beautiful green. A natural green. I may be eating my own words about the phthalo. Oh, this is coming through pretty nice, too. Not as bright as the other, though. You know, and my mixing up there, I could have took more blue, more of the lunar blue off. I can see the phthalo part coming through and staining the paper. Let me put a little bit more yellow on there. And you don't have to mix with Hansa yellow. You, you can use lemon yellow. You can use any yellow you want. A Rolian. Okay, our next one. This one was Rosa Neutral Black. And the next one a Sodalite Genuine. Now I really like this Sodalite Genuine right here. It has some granulation to it. So let's see. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to do a mix. If I do, it's going to make it. I should have just let it go there. That's pretty. And I'll get that. I put too much indigo on each one of these. That's really pretty. But it does not have very much Sodalite Genuine on there. So let me see if I can get a little bit more. These stock cards, and especially some of the Primatex, are, they just don't have big dots on them. That's really pretty. I made a mess right here, you know, and I went out of the circle over here, so I wanted it to be nice and relaxing, but, you know, I hope you can get the gist of it. So far, my favorite is the Lunar Blue when mixed. The subtle light's really pretty, too. Let's do the other four over here. 
Okay, so we'll do a gallo, which I have to go back to my pans. And that is one, two, three. One, two, three. A gallo. I'm going to put that right under that. That's supposed to be natural indigo. It's pretty when it first goes down, but when it dries, it's a little bit dull. I don't know, maybe I just like the look of wet paint. Okay, let's see. Let's get a little bit of Hansa. And I do have a little bit over here on my palette. So I'm not going to get a whole lot. And I'm just going to mix it a little bit here. That's pretty. It's pretty. Okay, let's just do the rest of them like that. I should have done them all like that. But we can kind of see how this is going to go. So that mixes with Hansa Yellow Pretty. Okay, Schminka is right here. And Schminka has that phthalo in it. It's pretty. It's, it is very pretty. You kind of get indigo blindness. It's a pretty mix. It is a beautiful mix. I don't know what my favorite would be. What do you what do you guys like so far? I mean, each one of these does something different. Okay, let's see. I just don't think I have enough of that PWC. But maybe I do. We'll see. We'll give it a try. PWC. This was PB66. This was a single pigment. I know it's only March 20th, but I am ready for spring. 
And it's just a, what's the saying? In like a lion, out like a lamb. It's coming in like a lion. Or no, it, did, it was like a lamb at the first of the month. It got real warm. That's pretty. That is really, really pretty mix. And you know, I don't think PWC is very expensive. So that might be, that might be a great indigo to get pre-mixed because it was, it's real pretty going down. I still think I like these two better. Of course, Daniel Smith. And I'm not even going to do Sennelier because I don't think that that looks like an indigo. So, okay, let's do a few mixes with a Lizard and Crimson. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do here like I did here. And then I can zoom in so you guys can catch. That is really pretty mix. All right, so we're going to do Indigo. Daniel Smith. Very pretty. A lot of it's how you Feel when you're painting it. Okay, now I'm going to take it with a lizard crimson. And this is the original Alizarin Crimson. I think it's PR83, which they do not consider light fast, but it can stand up. That gives a really beautiful violet. Really beautiful violet. Gorgeous. Okay, let's test Windsor and Newton. You can get permanent Elizabeth and Crimson. From any of the brands, and I think... I have to find out that pigment number. I can look on my dot card. I don't know if they give the pigment information on the dot card. They don't. They give all kinds of other numbers, but see, so you can see that phthalo coming through. But you can get a really nice dark with this Windsor and Newton. And when it dries down, it does have an indigo look to it. It's pretty. It's pretty. I wouldn't tell you you were wrong and be mad if you wanted to go this for Windsor and Newton. Because it is a good paint. Really pretty. Mixes wonderfully. Beautiful violet. Gorgeous violet.
and it really packs a punch. Hmm. So, and that's a decision making, you know, criteria is how it mixes. This seems to have more granulation, but boy, that is gorgeous. I don't know if you can tell how it is just made a beautiful purple. Gorgeous. Okay, American Journey. You know, and I'm sure American Journey is a company, Cheap, jo Cheap Joe's brand of paint. And I think it is produced by Da Vinci. Cheap Joe's is a wonderful place to go for watercolor workshops. I'm headed there in April. And I cannot wait. It is a wonderful place to be. Okay, so let's drag this out. There's that infamous phthalo color. Let's take some alizarin crimson. And that's really pretty. I think we need a little bit more. Just to give it a punch. And that is gorgeous. So, you know, I think that you just about can't go wrong in whatever you like. Let's see, where's that rosa indigo? Here it is. This is a really affordable option, are these rosa gallery paints. And they are beautiful paints. I would say next to Daniel Smith, these might be my favorite. That is such a pretty indigo going down. That is really nice. Let's see how that mixes with the Lizard and Crimson. Whoops. Got out of the lines again. I guess I need to be an abstract artist. That's gorgeous. That mixes beautifully. Love that. That might be one of my favorites. Let's go to Lunar Blue. Because this was my favorite on the green. Maybe it'll be my favorite on the Maybe it'll be my favorite on the Elizabeth and Crimson too. And I'm just using Hansa Yellow Medium and Elizabeth and Crimson as a starting point. You don't have to use those. You can use Quinacridone Rose. Um, lemon yellow, quinacridone red. I usually use quinacridone red. So, but this gives you a general idea on how these paints are going to react. So you can choose your that is so nice. That is so nice. Let's get some alizarin crimson. 
That is so beautiful on the page right there. I love the look of that wet paint. This is dried down a little paler, which is to be expected. It's lunar, lunar blue. Got a little bit more lizard crimson than I expected, I think. So I'm going to add back into a little bit more lunar, lunar blue and see if I can get that violet color, and I can. It's really pretty. Okay. That's gorgeous. That was my favorite over here. Okay. We'll continue on. So now we're going to do Blue Appetite Genuine. That lunar blue is really pretty. It's still wet though. Daniel Smith's Blue Appetite Genuine. It's a Primatech. It's really pretty though. Here in a little bit, we'll mix. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit lighter. So maybe we can see the violet a little bit better. Pretty, pretty. Mixing it on the paper. Oh, I should have. There we go. That makes a really pretty purple. Hmm. You know, some of these are starting to dry down, and they're looking very pretty. This one's really pretty. It's Rosa Gallery. That one's just, I think I had a little bit too much Alizarin and Crimson in there, but that's Lunar Blue. But that's very pretty. It's got like a red violet. And there is Blue Appetite Genuine. Now let's go to May and Dark Blue. And dried down, I really like this. It is, it just seems to have a little bit more depth to it. This lunar blue is a little bit green leaning. A little bit warmer or cooler. This is more neutral. So I'm interested to see how it's going to mix with Lizard and Crimson. Here in a little bit, we'll make our own. I don't know if I said that once already. We'll make our own indigo. Yeah, this seems to have a little bit more depth to it. We'll see once it once it dries down. Hmm, that's pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. That's pretty. That's Rosa. 
that has a little bit more depth too. And here's May and Dark. It's pretty. Okay, let's go to Rosa Neutral Black. This is Rosa Neutral Black. It has some of those same pigments in it. PB15 colon 1. PBK7. And. PR177. We'll see how this mixes. It's pretty. It's very gorgeous. That is, that makes a lovely violet. It's dark, but it's pretty. Doesn't take much to get it. That is pretty. Oh my goodness, how do you choose? You don't have to. You know, if you want to, you can. But you don't have to. You can have both. I have a collection. That's different. I have an obsession with art supplies, which is I enjoy watercolor. I enjoy painting. But the collection of water supplies and delving deep is a whole nother hobby in it, in itself. Okay. So light genuine. Oh, I do not know if I'm going to be able to get enough. I just got a little, little piece. I may have to be really... really scarce and this is really pretty color I'm not going to be able to get it real dark so I'm just going to take a teeny tiny bit of a lizard crimson and mix it Let's see if I can get a little bit more up so light I need to get a tube of this. It's really pretty color. And that makes a really pretty purple. Yeah. That's really, really pretty. You probably can see that a little bit better than you can tell from these because I laid them down so dark but I do like an indigo that's dark so because I like to use it for backgrounds and I like a dark dark indigo so if I can't get it dark it may not be on my palette all right so on the next one is a gallo we'll get that out here And we'll put that down. This natural palette is really, really nice. However, you know, there's no... It's all natural. This is probably the darkest color there is. Here's just, I'm going to put just a little bit of alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson is a punchy color. It's It's got a...
it's got a tinting strength that's pretty high. So I'm going to start slow on it. Mix it. It's a pretty mix. They're all pretty mixes. That's that's gorgeous. All right, Schminka. Here's this Schminka. Indigo. You can't go wrong with Schminka either. That's this one up here. I always like to think of indigo as like the color of blue jeans. Like dark jeans. That's pretty. That's a pretty indigo. I'm just touching that alizarin crimson. Barely. And it's dried down. So it does not take much to tint that. Now that's pretty. That's really pretty. Okay, on to the next one, PWC. <gasps> Again, that's off a dot card. There it is. So, it's going to be chintzy. It's a pretty indigo. PB66. It's a single pigment. Hmm. I'm going to start off with just a teeny, teeny, tiny. Just barely touching the alizarin crimson because I think I'm going to be able to tint this pretty quickly. That's pretty. Goodness gracious. That will be hard to make a decision. You guys will have to let me know what you think and why why you think now you know I could have added too much alizarin crimson like here and you know other places but and it will look different with like quinacridone rose and I am not going to do sennelier because I think the sennelier indigo is not an indigo. It's too, too thalo. So, oh goodness. Okay, so let's discuss the thoughts. Well, here we have all the pigments of the indigo colors. Indigo colors, not pigments. They're not all the same pigments. So that is something to keep in mind. So I'll hold them up and let you look at them.
There's some mixes with the greens and with the lesser and crimson. Okay, and then here is the mixes with the greens that I did. That was Daniel Smith's Indigo, Windsor and Newton, Daniel Smith, or American Journey, Rosa Gallery, Lunar Blue. That was pretty with the green. And that was pretty with the with the alizarin crimson as well. There's some granulation there. It's this one. I just think. I mean, that is pretty. I think the man dark is pretty too. There's the man dark with a lizard crimson. And the man dark with Hansa yellow. I guess it's just what you're looking for. And here are the circles that I made. See how pretty that lunar blue is? I love that granulation. But you know, if you're not into granulation, the Rosa Gallery is really pretty. And the Daniel Smith indigo does not granulate. I don't know. So, now, let's mix our own. Okay, so here is my Daniel Smith landscape palette. If you want a to see how I put this together, I'll leave that in the end cards or in the I cards above and in the description below. And I will also pin a comment to this um, to this palette because it really covers all of my color needs and I love it. So I can mix just about any color from this palette. So, but I do have an indigo on here, and because I do, you know, like to do dark backgrounds, and when I go to do dark backgrounds, I don't want to have to mix it. I want it to be the same uniform color all the way through. So, I do have an indigo, but say we wanted to make an indigo. So, I might start with French Ultramarine. A lot of people have French Ultramarine on their palette. And that's a good starter. I mean, Indigo is blue. but And then you could add Lunar Black. And I have Lunar Black on my palette. And that makes a beautiful Indigo. Oh, that really makes a nice indigo. But every time I mix it, am I going to have the same ratio? You know, as one time I mix it, I'm going to have a little bit of, um, a little bit more blue. Next time I'll have a little bit more black. You know, this makes a really beautiful indigo. I see I had some black, more black on my brush up higher 
Okay, so there's one way. That's a real easy way. Another way is to use phthalo blue. And I have that. We'll put that over here. This is phthalo blue green shade. And you could use phthalo blue red shade as well. Either way. Okay, and phthalo blue is a really, really strong color. So it's going to go more green, like some of your, this is kind of like your lunar blue. I'm going to get a little bit more lunar black because phthalo blue is really strong. I probably put just a little bit too much on there. And with a lot of these colors, we're seeing that it had PV19 or PR177. So that's a red. So we could go and take a little bit of alizarin crimson and knock that down a little bit. Knock the green down. And this is another indigo. And that's really pretty, too. That lunar black is... makes it really nice. Might even take a little bit more alizarin crimson and knock that down a little bit more. And it just makes it a little bit darker. Because there's so much green in it. I think Thalo Blue Red Shade would be a better a better mix. But that's really pretty. And that should level off and not be so streaky. But that Lunar Black makes it it granulates. So you could use Ivory Black, which is a little cooler. Okay, so another way you could use, I've got, um, this is my favorite one. I mean, to use French Ultramarine, because it's more red-leaning, I just think you need that little bit of red. Here's another swatch of it. But if you used, if you used um, ivory black, like PBK7 or something like that, it wouldn't be as granulating. It's pretty. Now, doesn't that look like blue jeans? I think it looks like blue jeans. So that is a way to mix your own indigo. Let's see if we can knock this phthalo blue back just a little bit more. Add a little bit more red. There we go. I think that that's why. Yeah, now that will be pretty, I think. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty. So Thalo Blue Green Shade will work. But you have to add that little bit of red to knock that green back. 
So yeah, that's really pretty. But I don't think I could mix that exact same thing the next time I wanted to add to my background. And indigo can be really, really pretty in a background. You know, I just did a little bit here really fast. It took me like two minutes. I just made a leaf and then I negative painted around it. And down here I added a lizard and crimson to it. And down up here I did Hansa Yellow Medium. So, and you can get that as dark as you wanted to go with, an, with subsequent layers. So, you know, it is pretty. I think it's really easy to mix your own. And if you get the quantities right, you know, you could just mix up some French ultramarine out of a tube and some black out of a tube and mix it up with a toothpick and get a pan full of color and make it your own shade. You know, that would be really cool to do too. And that way you wouldn't even have to buy an indigo. You could just make a mix and just kind of experiment. Maybe we'll do that on mixing some colors. So that's it guys. I'll put this palette at the end of the video and I hope you had fun. Please leave in the comments on what your favorite is, what your favorite mix is, what your favorite color indigo tube is. This is actually labeled indigo. Well, not all of them are labeled indigo. This is lunar. This is blue appetite, may and dark. Indigo, dark blue. What's your favorite? So thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.